What's up DCS crew? It's Carlos back at it again today. We are going to go ahead and take a quick break from Civivi for just a just a little moment and uh, talk about a knife that I'm actually pretty excited to go ahead and check out. I met the designer of this knife back in 2020 at SHOT Show in, in uh, Las Vegas over at the Kaiser booth and uh, well, let's just go ahead and show you the knife itself. This is the Kaiser Cormorant uh, V2. Now, I'm saying V2 because there was a previous iteration of this knife and not much has changed, but uh, I will tell you one of the big differences after the intro. Um, you know, there's a lot to really like about this knife, whether you're a lefty or a righty. And uh, like I said, I'm pretty excited to talk about this. So let's go ahead and get to it. Try to make this a short video, but you know how I can get long and drawn out. So let's roll these uh, credits real quick. Drop that intro. Hey guys, welcome back. And now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, the version two of the Cormorant. Now, one really easy way for you to be able to go ahead and uh, distinguish the version two from the version one, which was made by Yudon. Uh, you can actually see his uh, maker's mark right here, AKA Dr. EDC on uh, Instagram is uh, the scales. Now the scales are always, from what I've seen, they've been black and white for quite some time, unless Kaiser happens to do a, um, like a, you know, knife of the month type of thing. Um, but with the version one, you'll see that it has like two X's on it. It's actually pretty cool. It's going to have two X's on both sides. And this version actually has three lines. Uh, cut into the the black G10 so it can show the uh, the white G10 inlays in there or excuse me the uh, the white G10 that is under it it's basically a white G10 with a black G10 slab on top and uh, I think it's really cool it's a it's a nice setup and there's some really good texturing on uh, this whoop, excuse me on this particular uh, knife now um, as for um, the pros and the things that I really like about this knife from the time that I've been carrying it, um, I do have a couple of things to talk about. Number one is the deployment or the methods of deployment, okay? You'll do, you will see that it has a finger hole. And I, I talk about finger hole because whether you like to be somebody who actually, you know, um, opens the knife slowly or, you know, flick it open with authority, you do have the opportunity to do that here, okay? You have this little tab up here, which is great for... Uh, front flipping and unfortunately I'm not the best at that but you know it does work and then you have the flipper right here and for those of you who love to use uh, button locks to be able to just go ahead and engage and disengage the knife you can go ahead and do that as well so that's pretty cool now uh, aside from that I like the fact that you can customize this pretty easily all you really have to do is uh, remove the scales and because they're white underneath uh, you can take pretty much any other color of uh, red dye under the sun, yellow, green, blue, red, you know, as long as it's not black because, I mean, you know, you want to put a nice little pop of color outside of white, which actually has a really cool contrast with black being that they're mo both uh, neutral colors. Um, but I think something like this in a blue, a yellow, a red, orange, something like that gives it a nice little pop. So it allows the user to be able to go ahead and, you know, um, with the proper tools to take this apart, uh, add a little customization that isn't too difficult. I mean, there's, you know, videos on Blade HQ that actually talk about how easy it is to be able to do something like that. I myself will use RIT dye um, or uh, I dye polymer, which actually works really well on knives as well. And um, if I had this knife, uh, I would definitely do that. Now, this particular knife is part of the Apex Pass Around, so shout out to them. Um, and going into the next thing I really do like about this knife is that it is lefty friendly. Now, it is tapped for left and right hand carry. It has a deep carry clip with um, a little space kind of dug into the G10 here, machined into the G10 to allow for the deep carry clip to sit almost flush uh, with the, um, the knife scale itself. But if you look very closely here, you'll find that the... Uh, the screws do sit a little bit proud of the scale, so it's unfortunate that they're not flat, like some other knives that I've reviewed on this channel, but you know, everything else looks actually pretty well done. Um, as far as the placement of the clip, let's go ahead and see what it looks like in a pocket. So I'm gonna take out my little pocket right here, throw it in, see what it looks like. And this is actually what it's gonna look like inside of the pocket. And it's actually pretty, you know, it's pretty well concealed. I like that. I don't like the fact that the uh, pocket clip isn't um, 
at least, uh, you know, just kind of lightly brushed or even matted to be able to go ahead and keep it from kind of popping because, you know, um, being that the, uh, the hardware, like say for example, the button isn't very shiny, I think that it would work well that way. But again, um, you know, it's probably just uh, one thing that they did to keep the cost from going up and adding an extra step during the machining process. So I'll give them that. But I do like the fact that it is lefty friendly. And keep in mind, if you're gonna go ahead and disassemble this knife, there are two things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a T8 and a TX, uh, excuse me, TX, a T6 bit, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Weeha, Bondis, or whatever. Just make sure they're quality bits. Uh, that way you can go ahead and take this apart and not sacrifice any hardware. But if you happen to have issues with the hardware, this is a knife that comes with an extra set of not only a pivot, but um, screws for your pocket clip or the actual uh, the knife frame itself. And if you look very closely at the uh, at the screws and additional hardware that they send with the knife, you're gonna notice that there's actually blue Loctite that's on there, which is really, really cool. And that's maybe, maybe assuming that this has blue Loctite when they went ahead and they assembled it. Um, I haven't disassembled this because this isn't my knife. If it was mine, I'd go ahead and disassemble and check it out for myself. But I'm gonna go ahead and err on the side of caution and assume that if they brought those extra parts with it and it is dipped in blue Loctite, that the existing parts are dipped in blue Loctite and therefore easy to go ahead and take apart. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, and being that they have the extra parts, you know, I, I do have to say that the materials and the quality, uh, you know, control on these materials is actually very good. The G10 um, has, obviously it's this white G10 with this black uh, layer on, of uh, G10 on the top that has been textured. And you do see uh, where it's been machined so that it's cut out for the, uh, the button. You see where it's machined and it's cut out for the pocket clip. It has these three little uh, machine marks right here, which, I mean, it helps a little bit with, you know, when you are holding it in the hand and you have your fingers here and you're actually doing precision cuts. Um, you'll see the jimping up here, where it's very easy to be able to go out and hold and be able to, to kind of put pressure on it while you're uh, applying, you know, whatever you need to do for extended periods of time. Uh, it feels good in the hand. Uh, and, and this G10, while it is, you know, um, it is grippy and it doesn't have that texture, it's, it's enough to where you don't have to worry about it, you know, cutting up the inside of your, you know, your shorts or your jeans or anything like that, any more than some of these other offerings that are actually out there. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that being said, I think I've run up a little bit too long without actually introducing the specs. So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the right over here. Feel free to go ahead and pause if you want to see that a little bit more. And... We're gonna go ahead and show some knives in comparison. So, first things first, let's go ahead and show off. This is the uh, Spyderco Pair 3, okay? This one's from Civivi, and this is the Civivi Knox, right there. It's a Nitro V, by the way. This one's in S30V, that's just a standard Pair 3, by the way. Uh, speaking of which, here's another Made in America folder. Here's the Malibu, okay? What else do we have over here? Something that people would usually have. Okay, here we go. Here's a Civivi Elementum. Now, you might not have this version, but you probably do have an Elementum. It's probably one of the best knives that uh, Civivi actually sells. One of their best sellers, actually. Okay, and I guess that's about it, right? Yeah, I'll just keep it like that. Yeah, all right. Now, one other thing that I really liked about this knife, and I do want to go ahead and stress this because this is something that you see um, very seldomly on button locks. And I'm gonna go ahead and show this in comparison. If you look very closely at the buttons of these two, you'll notice that the button on this one is not only, uh, you know, not as proud out of the scale, okay, as you can see, okay. And then when you look at the Cormorant, not only is it a bit more proud of the scales, you can actually see the button right there, okay. But it's also textured. That's actually really cool. So like when you're, when you're looking to feel for it, very easy to be able to use and deploy the blade. I thought that was really awesome. And I thought that was actually a really good idea. Now, um, my thoughts and things that they could have improved on, in all honesty, I mean, the, you know, you is a, a person who really takes uh, knife making seriously. And uh, for being a knife that he actually, you know, had a very large hand in designing with, alongside of uh, a buddy in mine, Ozzo, that really helped him uh, with some of this process, I'm sure. Um, there's a lot of things 
going on here, but when you start to use the knife, when you start to really look at what the ins and outs of this knife is, you'd be surprised, I mean, on how good it actually happens to feel in the hand when you're actually using it for extended periods of time, when you need to deploy it, you know, how quiet it actually is when you're, you know, deploying it, as it has a, a very distinct sound. You can deploy it uh, slow, you can deploy it qu quickly, you can use it via multiple methods. There's at least four methods of deployment. There's the button, there's the, the flipper, the front flipper, and the actual hole itself. And I mean, it's something that, in all honesty, it's worth a look. And if it were me, you know, would I pass on it? Would I trade for it or would I buy it? Now that I've actually had it in my hand and I've been able to, to use it a little bit, I'd buy it and I'd recommend it. It's not because I know the dude, it's because I know a decent knife when I see one. And for me, in my opinion, I like this knife and I think that it's a good knife. Now, my opinion is in fact, that doesn't mean like when I don't like a knife that it's trash or when I like a knife, it's a holy grail you guys can, uh, your your mileage may vary, basically. So keep that in mind whenever you're checking reviews on my channel or any other ones. And just remember, guys, whether you choose to go ahead and um, pick up one of these or maybe something that's made in America or something that's made in another country, um, you know, use it for its intended purpose. You know, um, don't put them in a safe queens. These are things that are meant to be used. And I, I think that um, there was a lot of uh, thought put into how this knife was going to be utilized by the end user and not necessarily by a collector. So keep that in mind. It's a really, really nice knife. It's got that S35VN steel to it, that button lock that's textured, the different deployment methods, and you know the fact that you can kind of customize it and kind of make it your own really just kind of brings it over the top. You know, you get great jimping, whether it's right here on the spine or that little mini portion of the spine, and then where it kind of uh, just adjusts right there towards the back. And I think it feels pretty well in my hands, my, I guess, extra medium hands. And it would be something that if somebody asked me, okay, would you recommend it? Yeah, I would. So that's basically my review, guys. I don't have too many cons about it, except for the fact that it's it's hard to find these in very large amounts. Sometimes they sell pretty quickly and then they get restocked. And, you know, uh, that's that's something on Kaiser, I guess. But um, that being said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and send me a quick message. You know, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have one, you know, tell me what your, your thoughts are on it. And just remember, guys, whether you choose to uh, have something like the Comrade or even something that's made in America with that thumb hole like the Para 3, just remember, if you EDC... Think of DCS. You guys have been great. Here's some videos for you to watch, and I hope to see you guys on the flip side. Take it easy. Peace.